Now, this year's Australians of the Year have been named at a ceremony in Canberra with the Prime Minister on hand to honour them. As you know now, the 2015 Australian of the Year, Rosie Batty, dedicated her award to her 11-year-old son, Luke, who died at the hands of his father. This, she has made this her campaign now, and Rosie Batty joins us now from our Canberra studio. Rosie Batty, good morning and sincere congratulations to you. Thank you very much. How does it feel this morning? Um, incredulous, a bit of a blur, um, but very, very happy. This has just been, I, I can't imagine the year that it's been for you, the, the last uh, more than 12 months since your, your son was killed by his father. Something that always occurs to me every single time I, I hear you speak, and, and you never stop in, in your fight against family violence, how do you manage to get up every morning after everything that you've gone through and do this? Well, I guess um, everybody is so supportive of me and so caring, so compassionate. Every day, whether it's friends or family or whether it's lovely people who greet me in the street, um, they all give me the reason to, to want to go forward because, you know, everybody has so much compassion for me and so, mu so much encouragement for me to continue what I've started, that it's given me greater confidence and greater drive. And, and you know, now I'm, I'm really excited with this opportunity to be Australian of the Year and, and the opportunities that will present for me. It's, I, I wish I could have Luke back, I'd do anything, but this is a, a great um, new life for me in so many different ways. It is a remarkable platform that you're being offered now and, and you clearly intend to use it and I want to talk about that in just a moment. But going back to that, to the dreadful hours after the, the, the death of Luke at the hands of his father and uh, in a moment that, that no one will forget for those of us who saw it, you came out and you spoke and you spoke for 25 minutes and you spoke about the issues surrounding your life and Luke's life and the issue of family violence. It seemed to me that this was something that had been boiling up inside you for a long time. Time, you, you almost had this message ready to go. This was the life that you'd experienced and you'd felt let down by so many people. Was that, was that how it was for you? Look, to be honest, I, I don't, there was no agenda and there was no planning and um, it, it, it clearly was there and I clearly needed to say it and share it. Um, but really in those early hours, um, nothing was premeditated. I didn't know what I was feeling. It was still a state of disbelief, but you know, it, it, there clearly was that need to say, this is what's happening. If it can happen to me, and I live in a nice house, in a nice neighborhood, and I'm an independent, um, intelligent, um, normal everyday person, it can happen to anybody. And, and I guess I was compelled at that moment to, speak from the heart but you know what came out wasn't premeditated it just came out you've had extraordinary support as you say from family and from friends but also particularly in victoria and in melbourne by the police force by victoria police and, and in a sense the leadership there has uh, walked by your side in this particular issue how important to you has that been it, it's been essential um the night that luke was killed um the detective in charge said to me, Rosie, this is not your fault. You are not to blame. This was a premeditated, premeditated act. You couldn't have changed this. So, you know, that those words helped me all of the time because you look at everything you could have done differently. You look to blame yourself. And to have those words to come back to, you know, really have always helped me. But, you know, the, the previous police commissioner, Mr Kenlay, came out to see me personally within days, wanting to know what they could have done differently, wanting to understand how they can change, wanted to hear my experience as a victim. And that willingness to, to take on the chin things that they did right, things that they could have improved on, things that they may have done wrong, you know, it gives you a feeling of being heard, being um, people caring about you, people you wouldn't expect to care about you. So it all, it was all, all helped enormously. And, you know, he's given, Mr Lay has given me that huge confidence moving forward that, you know, I am on the right track. Um, my voice is being heard. He 
started this, you know, it, it wasn't the politicians, it was the police commissioners understanding this is a gender issue. And he talks as a man in that language and he takes that responsibility as a man too. So those messages have been so powerful to all of the family violence um, organisations out there. Mm. And it's, a, you know, it, it's been imperative in our journey. Well, this is, is the platform that you, you clearly intend to use, that you've been given with this uh, very important honour, to talk about the change that needs to take place. Talk to us specifically this morning about that. What do you think needs to shift? What do governments, state and federal, need to do? There needs to be a serious, serious campaign. A campaign about prevention, but and a campaign that is going to ch challenge and reduce these statistics. You know, we've had great success with road safety and other strategic campaigns. Um, so both parties of government need to have to agree and work on long term strategies that are not just short term, that are just not, you know, short sighted or band aid fixes. So, so in the same way as we've seen road toll campaigns, for example, or drink driving campaigns, and in particular to use the TAC uh, example in Victoria, you want to see a specific and ongoing targeted campaign along yes. those lines dealing with um, family violence? I, I think that would be a, an enormous step forward, enormous. And uh, in the meantime, while you continue your, your drive to try and get that sort of attention, this seems to have become now a conversation that Australians are willing to have. Has it been, how painful I guess has it been for you personally that, that finally we're now talking, 2014 really was the year where we started talking about family violence, but it took this, this unbearable tragedy in your life for us to get to that point? Look. Um it always takes tragedy. I don't know what it is about humankind where we, we learn from tragedy. Um, it, it's just the way I think that we're made. And there are always things happening every day and somebody is somebody's going to experience a tragedy and that somebody's life is going to change. For me to feel that Luke's death has made this change, this possibility, you know, that, that gives me a um, great satisfaction that my my son helped um, change society mm. um, that that he may always be remembered as that terrible incident um, that should never have happened and it you know everybody stopped and, and remembered hearing about it um, whether you're a sports person whether you're a mother or whether you're a father um, or a grandfather or grandmother you know it, it was a horrific thing to happen. Um, nobody wants to experience it. Nobody wants to be me um, going through the rest of my life without Luke. But, you know, th there is life. There is still hope. There is still joy. And um, we can overcome terrible tragedies, but it's through, it's through human kindness and compassion that we do want to move forward, you know. Rosie, um, all of us wish you well, uh, enormously so, and, uh, and we hope that you can find some peace in your life. So also uh, go well as Australian of the Year this year as well. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I will.